In this video, I will give you my top 10 tips for dealing with high speed winds. Without any further ado, let's dive straight in. So before we get into the top 10, um, these tips really are to do with high speed winds. So anything above 70 miles per hour. Um, some of them also also um, be applicable to to winds from 40, 50 miles an hour also. Um, but typically a motorhome and a camper van should be okay at those kinds of speeds. However, as I say, some of these tips will make it more comfortable and more bearable even in lower speed winds. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking with number one. Number one, leave the area. Um, now, obviously that's not always possible. Uh, you may be working in the area, you, you may have commitments in the area, you may have already paid up on the web, on the site to stay there for a predetermined time. Um, so leaving isn't really an option. However, if you're aware that a storm is coming and some high predicted winds are expected, then, and you can leave, that's obviously the best choice. Get out of the area, don't risk your van, don't risk yourselves, um, just, just leave the area and come back when it's safe to do so. In my previous video, I'll link to up here somewhere, um, where I kind of dealt with Storm Eunice and Storm Dudley, uh, I left the campsite I was on to go and seek shelter just because I was because I was in the open field and wasn't willing to test my van out. Um, so yeah, number one, if you can leave, leave. Number two, face the wind. Um, now this is, seems to be contentious in, in certain groups on, on Facebook. Um, some people say, put your bum into the wind and others say, put your face, your nose into the wind. Now, given my very limited technical understanding of motor vehicles, what I do know is that when they design vans and motor cars and any moving vehicle, they put it in wind tunnels. Um, and they put it into a wind tunnel face first, not ass first. So I'm not sure why people suggest putting your ass into the wind because on most motorhomes and vans, your backside is a flat surface. Um, I think the arguments I've seen some people make is that you've got less windows in the back, so should something come flying into it, you've got less chance of breaking windows, etc. However, you know, the main objective here is to try and get as sturdy as possible in your van. Um, so, yeah, definitely, and again, you know, it's not always possible to do it depending on the pitch. If you're on a pitch, for example, the pitch may be orientated into a certain direction. You may not easily be able to move on that particular pitch. Um, or if you're wild parking, you might be in a lay-by or something like this where it's just not feasible to do. But again, where you can, try to turn your nose into the wind. Um, wind is, you know, nature is unpredictable. Wind is never going to come consistently from the same direction. You are going to get gusts that swirl around and hit you from the side, etc. But for the majority of it, try to turn your nose into the wind where you can. Number three, avoid parking near trees. Again, um, you know, I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but a lot of people do seek shelter near trees or under trees and um, I don't know I can't remember a storm that's gone past where someone hasn't been killed by a falling tree um, and a lot of those times is people who have parked under those trees so yeah avoid wherever you can to park under especially large trees um, you know, you, you really don't want to be testing the strength of your vehicle if a tree should fall on it. Um, so yeah, again, where you can, if it's possible, get away from any high trees, um, especially in, in high storm type winds. Number four, try to be as level as possible. Um, Again, you don't want to be tilting, for example, with the wind. So let's say 
the wind is coming from the east and your van is tilting towards the west, you're essentially helping the wind by you know, already putting your van into a precarious position and tilting with the force of the wind. So where you can try to, again, as I said previously, it's not always possible. Many of these tips aren't always possible, but where you can try to do your best to be level as possible. Um, which brings me on to number five. Do not use ramps. Um, so typically when you're on a campsite or wherever you might be parking up, you try to get your van or your motorhome as level as possible. And occasionally that could be include using ramps. When you're dealing with high speed winds, I would suggest that you don't put yourself onto ramps. Um, again, again, you're lifting your van up, giving the wind more opportunity to get underneath the van. Um, and also if you do have a strong gust from the sides, it could push your van off the ramps, etc. So for more stability and just put your van as close to the ground as possible, I strongly suggest that you stay away from ramps and very high wind speeds. Number six, like ramps, don't use stabilizers. Um, so my van, my motorhome, for example, is quite um, rocky at the best of times, even if it's um, completely no wind out there. Um, even my, my dog, Shaka, if he walks around the van and he's only 24 kilograms, the van shakes. Um, so I tend, to, I've now bought myself just some small little stabilizer jacks to put in the back just to give the van a little bit of stability. Um, but in high speed winds, you want to avoid using stabilizers because actually the rocking of your home, of your van slash motor home is beneficial in high wind scenarios because if, you're, if your motor home is static and you know your jacks are holding it in place, the force of the wind is gonna build up and build up where it may just push the whole van over. Whereas if you're not on stabilizers, the wind will push, your van sways a bit, that pressure of the wind will then flow over the top and release your van as it were. Um, so yeah, try to avoid using stabilizers in high wind speeds. And again, just a reminder, I'm talking about 60 miles plus here. Number seven, fill your water tank. Um, so the theory, basically the theory is you want to make the bottom of your van as heavy as possible. Um, Cause that's where motorhomes and, and camper vans carry most of the weight is at the low level. But, um, so if you have, like me, have an onboard water tank, um, fill it up. Because I, for example, have a 100 liter or 120 liter tank. If I fill that up, that's an extra 100 kilograms low down on my vehicle that's just giving it more weight onto the ground in addition to that if like me again you have a wastewater tank on on board uh, fill that up too um, so what i did when storm eunice was approaching is i effectively emptied my fresh water tank into the gray water tank or the wastewater tank um, and then filled up the, um, the water tank again. So I my grey water tank also is about 100 litres. So between the two tanks being full, I added an additional 200 kilograms to the base weight of the van, just giving it a bit more um, weight, you know, requiring more wind force to, to kind of push it over. So yeah, number six, um, sorry, number seven, fill your water tanks. Number eight, and this again, this should be a no-brainer. Close all your windows, all your hatches, skylights, sky vents, whatever you have, whatever can be closed, make sure it's closed securely. Um, so when Storm Eunice hit here, I vacated the campsite, but when I came back to the campsite a couple of days later, um, several of the, car the caravans here had windows broken. Um, and there weren't actually windows that were open. It, they, it was due to other vents being open where the wind came in, caused so much pressure on the inside of the van, it blew the window out. 
Um, so yeah, just make sure if you know there's some high pressure winds, high speed winds coming, just seal up your van as, as much as you can. Close um, close all your, your skylights, etc., and make sure everything's really battened down. Um, what I noticed in my motorhome is that I've got vents, obviously, where my heat, my boiler is, and where my fridge is, and also I have an extractor fan above my hob, um, which has an external vent. Now, those vents were letting in a lot of air during my uh, during the high speed winds. So you may, if especially if it's winter time, um, you might just want to try and seal up those vents as best as you can. Just put some duct tape or something over it temporarily, uh, just to stop that wind coming in from there. And also just, again, those things just give the wind something more to grab onto. Number nine, take down your awnings. Again, something, uh, you know most of you probably would think about um but i did see people with awnings out and there's a few there were a few broken awnings when i came back here on just after storm units so people do try to you know ride their luck um oh my awning will be fine or blah 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 but just, what's the point what's what, why risk your your awning or your gazebo or whatever you may have out um, if you know that you're going to be hit by 70 plus miles per hour winds, just take it down. Take your awning down, reel it in, whatever you, you may have. Um, pack it away safely because if it's, if it's an awning, for example, like what I have, which is attached to my motorhome and you wind it out, um, you know, if the wind takes that, it could rip the entire side, of, side wall of my van as it rips the, the awning off. So it's just not worth the risk of the damage that could be done to your vehicles. So that's number nine, take down your awnings. And then finally, number 10, do not use external covers. Um, again, most people would probably know this or think to, know, to do this, but just take down any external covers you may use normally. Um, so I normally use external covers, especially in the winter, it kind of reduces uh, moisture in the vehicle when you use external ones rather than the internal ones. But again, it is just something that could get damaged and something that the wind could get behind and gives the wind leverage on your vehicle that can really shake your vehicle around. Um, so yeah, just, just remove them pack them away safely get past the worst of the winds and then you can go and put them back out again um, so yeah that's my top 10 tips for dealing with high speed winds i hope it's been useful um, if you have any tips of your own for high speed dealing with high speed winds please do comment below and i will add them to a future video um, and again I, I i'm not one for doing the marketing stuff i keep forgetting to do it and once i upload the video to youtube i kick my own backside um, but please if you have found any value in this do hit the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications of new videos and join me for this journey until next time be safe be kind cheers bye bye